So what really happened on that day in 1986? Thanks to the groundbreaking work of investigators, we now know that the official narrative and much of the news broadcast on that day was deeply misleading. Before we explain why they created such a hoax, here is a rundown of the surviving crew members. Number one, Francis Richard Scobie, commander of the Challenger Space Shuttle. Born on May the 19th, 1939, Commander Francis Richard Scobie was 46 when he supposedly died in the Challenger explosion. He would be 75 years old if he were alive today. Strangely, there's a man also named Richard Scobie, the CEO of a Chicago marketing advertising company called Cows and Trees, who bears a striking resemblance, factoring in the 30-year time lapse, to Commander Richard Scobie. Same high forehead, same eyebrows, same wide set eyes that are slightly tilted down in their outer corners. The source of the pic on the right of CEO Richard Scobie is his LinkedIn page. If you go on the Cows and Trees website, you'll see an animation of a rocket-powered cow in the sky with swirling smoke shaped like the number six, much like Space Shuttle Challenger as it was seen on TV exploding in midair. Wink wink, CEO Richard Scobie sure has a sense of humour. Number two, Michael J. Smith, pilot of Challenger. Born on April the 30th, 1945, Challenger pilot Michael John Smith was 41 years old when he supposedly died in the explosion. There's a man also named Michael J. Smith who bears a striking resemblance to astronaut Michael J. Smith. Same horizontal eyebrows, same grey-blue eyes, same vertical indentation in the tip of his nose. This Michael J. Smith is a professor, retired, of industrial and systems engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Astronaut Michael J. Smith would be 70 years old if he were alive today. Well, guess what? There just so happens to be a 69-year-old Michael J. Smith whose address includes Madison, Wisconsin. He's 74 on this Look Up Anyone list. Number three, Ronald McNair. Challenger's Mission Specialist. Born on October the 21st, 1950, Challenger's Mission Specialist Ronald McNair, the second African-American astronaut with a PhD in physics, would be 64 years old if he had not supposedly perished in the space shuttle explosion. If Ronald were still alive today, he would look just like this pic of his brother, Carl. Carl McNair is an author, education consultant, and inspirational speaker, and he just so happens to be the founder and president of the Ronald E. McNair Foundation. How convenient. Number four, Ellison Onizuka, Challenger Mission Specialist. Another Challenger Mission Specialist, Ellison Onizuka, the first Japanese American astronaut, also has a lookalike brother named Claude. Born on June 24th, 1946 in Hawaii, Ellison would be 68 years old today if he had not supposedly died in the Challenger explosion. If Ellison was still alive, he would look just like this pic of his younger brother, Claude. Same eyebrows, same eyes, same crow's feet wrinkles, same nose, even the same hair parting. Claude Onizuka is living out his days as a liquor adjudication board member of the Department of Liquor Control, County of Hawaii, Hilo, Hawaii. Number five, Judith Resnick, Challenger Mission Specialist. Born on April the 5th, 1949, Challenger Mission Specialist Judith Arlene Resnick, with a PhD in electrical engineering, was the first Jewish American astronaut to go into space and the second female American astronaut. She would be 66 years old today if she had not died in the explosion. Except if she is alive today it's not difficult to imagine that after 29 years astronaut Judith Resnick would look like Arthur Lyman professor of law Judith Resnick at Yale Law School. Dark curly hair, dark eyes, same eyebrow shape, same lines on both sides of the face extending up from the jaw. When you compare the voices and mannerisms of astronaut Judith Resnick and professor Judith Resnick the similarity becomes undeniable. We looked through Ancestry.com's 241 death records for the last name Resnick, but we can't find the Social Security Death Index for astronaut Judith Resnick or any other Judith Resnick. Number six, Sharon Krista McAuliffe, Challenger Payload Specialist. Born on September the 2nd, 1948, Sharon Krista McAuliffe was a social studies teacher at Concord High School in New Hampshire when she was selected from over 11,000 applicants to participate in the NASA Teacher in Space project. If Challenger had not exploded, she would be the first teacher in space. If she had not died in the Challenger disaster, McAuliffe would be 66 years old today. Well, there's a Sharon A. McAuliffe, an adjunct professor at Syracuse University College of Law, who kind of looks like an older astronaut McAuliffe factoring in the 30 years time lapse. Look at the cowlick of hair, sweeping from the center of their hairlines to the left side of their foreheads. It may also be entirely coincidental that Syracuse law professor Sharon is a cousin of Terry McAuliffe, 
the current governor of Virginia, who was co-chairman of President Bill Clinton's 1996 re-election campaign and chairman of Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential campaign. Terry McAuliffe, an advocate of gun control, is also very much concerned about NASA funding issues. In the end, we need to ask ourselves this question. It's one thing that one of Challenger's crew members resembles someone alive today. We could talk that up to a coincidence. But it's another thing entirely that six members of the Challenger crew have doppelgangers who are alive and in some cases with exactly the same names. Richard Scobie, Michael J. Smith, Judith Resnick and Sharon McAuliffe and are working at high levels in their original careers. What are the chances of that? You don't have to be a NASA boffin to know that those odds defy statistical probability. So why would NASA create another hoax? Those interested in Gematria might be interested to know that NASA stands for the National Aeronautical and Space Association. And if you attribute a number to each character, you get 666. Given the powerful symbolic value of space missions, it should come as no surprise that NASA are part of the occult elite, waging powerful psychological wars on mankind. An expression immediately comes to mind, revelation of the method. Originating from the ancient Rosicrucian texts, this concept refers to the process of exposing the masses to dark realities, often in a veiled and underhanded manner, including hoaxes, to mock the masses. Some occultists compare this normalization process to the alchemical great work, where the world is transmuted according to the will of the occult elite. In his book, Secret Societies and Psychological Warfare, Michael Hoffman explained why the elite like to rub our faces in it. The alchemical principle of the revelation of the method has, as its chief component, a clown-like grinning mockery of the victims as a show of power and macabre arrogance. When this is performed in a veiled manner, accompanied by certain occult signs and symbolic words, and elicits no meaningful response of oppositions or resistance from the targets, it is one of the most efficacious techniques of psychological warfare and mind rape.